So today we're going to be talking about choosing a piece of equipment for your homestead. Now there's a lot of folks out there starting their homesteads who definitely have limited financial might. <laughs> I know for us one of our first big decisions to make on our homestead was choosing a piece of equipment. And, uh, and so we went through all of the obvious options, you know, side-by-side, -side, four wheeler tractor. We even considered a mule. Side-by-side -side was too expensive, mule is too impractical. And so that narrowed it down to a four wheeler or a tractor. Now we were not gonna be able to get both of them at the same time, so we had to choose one. So I have a pretty good history of work in the land with tractors, so I know what they're capable of. I've ridden four wheelers. I've always thought of them as more of like a recreational vehicle for like trail riding and exploring and camping. And that is completely wrong. These are, these are capable work vehicles. They are really capable. Anyways, so uh, let's go ahead and take a, a closer look at either one of these and I'll give you some specs on them and that might kind of uh, help you make your decision. Okay, so this tractor we're looking at here is a 1948 Ford 8N. Now these are readily available on Craigslist. They range from about $1,000 to $2,500. The $2,500 one is state fair showroom perfect. The $1,000 one is not. <laughs> Things to look for when you're looking for an old tractor like this is good compression, make sure it's not smoking. If the hydraulics work, that's good too. And if the tires are good, those are good. But all the parts are readily available of these things. They're out there, you can get them, they're cheap, they're easy to work on. Anyways, but a tractor. Now, the tractor has a lot of advantages over a four-wheeler. It has a three-point hitch, and the three-point hitch, it just opens up unlimited options for boom poles, uh, the trailer hitch attachment, scraper blades, dirt scoops, I mean, goes on, brush hooks, I mean, brush hogs, everything. It just keeps going and going and going. So, so long term, the tractor is just, I mean, it's just, it's, its capabilities are just almost unlimited. For us, we were going to be clearing some roads, clearing some land. We're going to be taking a lot of logs to the mill, bringing a lot of lumber back to different sites, building barns and shops. So the tractor seemed like the best choice for us because it does really excel in the field of carrying heavy loads, dragging heavy loads, and just really hard work. This is a good tool for doing really, really hard work. However, on a homestead, you'll probably have 150 small jobs <laughs> to every 20 big jobs. So that leaves a niche for the four-wheeler, and that's what makes the four-wheeler a contender. Anyways, let's take a closer look at the four-wheeler. So the four-wheeler over here they're readily available on Craigslist too. Now, this is a 2004 Honda Foreman Rubicon 500. Now, a 500 is not the smallest machine on the market, but it's definitely not the biggest one. It's full-time four-wheel drive, has high and low range, and, uh, and so it's, it's really, really capable. Now, like I said earlier, I always saw these as being more of like a recreational, camping, exploring, sort of trail riding thing. And that's, that's definitely not true at all. These are really capable workhorses. It's not capable of anything even close to the heavy work that a tractor can do. But the tractor is no match for this thing as far as running errands, delivering resource, and stuff like that. So if we have a job going way up on the other side of the hill and we forget something back at the shop, it's so fast and easy just to come back and get whatever you need, deliver coal, bring in resource up here. This is the tool for the job. And since we have got the four-wheeler, we realize that we leave the tractor in the shed a lot. So these are very useful. Now, now you know, when you start your homestead, you're not going to be able to just go buy both of them. But anyways, so yeah, this is a good tool. Great to have on the homestead. It, it makes life way easier. Let's go back over here and, and take a look at some of the specs on the tractor. Anyway, so some of the specs on this tractor. This tractor weighs... Uh, 2,400 pounds, that's pretty heavy. The four-wheeler over there, it only weighs 600. <laughs> and so when it comes to traction, when it comes to holding back a trailer, when you're going downhill with a lot of weight in it, 2,400 pounds is what you want underneath you, clearly. But when it comes to maneuvering across rough terrain at high speed, quickly delivering resource, 600 pounds is what you want underneath you. <laughs> it's just way better for that. Now, uh, this, this tractor has, it's a claimed 23 horsepower on the drawbar. 
but that doesn't really mean anything because the transmission and the gearing it's is really where it's all at here and and as far as like like torque and power it's unlimited it you could it doesn't matter you can't stop it now the four-wheeler over there it has a claimed 15 horsepower and it's full-time all-wheel drive and and all four wheels do spin when you get down on it and but it only has 600 pounds of weight and so as far as traction and tow ability and ability to hold back a load it can't compete at all with the tractor not even anywhere close but those are some of the thoughts that 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 or the experience that we've had but anyways let's watch the two of these machines uh compete with one another and uh and you guys make your own decision anyways let's go ahead and get started so one advantage that the four-wheeler has over the tractor is its size it's very small very compact it's also four-wheel drive so that means it can go almost anywhere our property is is largely just raw land with no access roads and so a lot of our firewood is really, really hard to get to. Now, a disadvantage is it can't haul very much, where the tractor can haul five times more firewood, but the tractor can only access the firewood that's alongside the roads, which is very limited. And with the four-wheeler, it allows us the ability to get out in the woods and access all the little pieces, just unlimited amounts of it. So that, that's a major advantage. So we're gonna go ahead and cut a load and put on here, and you'll see that the load itself is not very big and the four-wheeler can't ha handle that much weight and it starts to get tippy and, and it becomes a little unstable over the rough terrain. So let's get a load on this thing and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. All right, so we have it loaded up and in terms of a lot of firewood, there's not that much firewood on here. But in terms of a safe load for the four-wheeler, it's at the top end of that safe load. It's probably like all the way to the top of the safe load because even with this sort of volume of wood, it makes it incredibly tippy and, and hard to maneuver and fairly dangerous in, in general. So you definitely don't want to go any more than this, but let's, uh, let's start working our way out the side of the hill and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So for scientific purposes, I, I just want to show you how, just how tippy it gets with the wood up like that. you can see that I could easily tip that thing straight over. And so when you're maneuvering across logs and uneven terrain like rocks, I mean, it's, it, it is a thing. The four-wheeler can't haul that much. So here we are back at the home site and uh, we're going to offload this firewood here but before we do I wanted to point out a few things before we move on. So as far as the power of the machine goes and traction, now I had it down in, in low range and with this load on it 
it doesn't even challenge the power. It has plenty of power and more. You don't even notice any sort of loss as far as like it being sluggish or lugging down or losing traction or, or feeling like you're not going to be able to complete your job. No problem. It can easily do that and more. Now, as far as handling goes, uh, it, it feels like it's going to tip over at all points of the compass because it actually is about to tip over at all points of the compass. So you need to be really, really careful there <laughs> and choose your line carefully. Now, with this little bit of weight up here on the front end, it, it, makes the, uh, it just makes the handling and the steering absolutely awful. And you wouldn't think it would have that much of an impact, but it does. And as the differential up front is uh, switching from wheel to wheel, the handlebars are, are just viciously fighting you. And it makes it really, really hard to control. So I just wanted to point those things out. And, uh, and you know, keep in mind, this isn't the biggest load in the world as, as far as firewood goes, but it is a big load as far as safety and stability goes. This is about as much as you'd want to go. Anyways, we're going to throw this wood on the ground, and then we're going to go get the tractor and cut another load of firewood. And you guys can compare and, and, and let us know what you think. So we got her all loaded up and securely lashed down. Now the trailer we're using here is a four by eight. So four by eight by two would be an exact half a cord of wood. So you can see we're a little bit more than that. So I think we're pushing about two thirds of a cord. Now that is a significant load. Anyways, the tractor handles it no problem. The trailer does have a little bit of weight on it. That's probably a little bit more than the trailer's waited for. But uh, as long as you be careful and tastefully use it, it'll be all right. So let's go ahead and start making for the house and see how the tractor does with this weight on it. All right, so uh, let's, let's take a moment to talk about how that felt driving this load. This is an incredibly heavy load. And we, we were on the road most of the time and we only went up a, not a very steep hill, but it's steeper than it looks on the camera. And it had pretty good traction, no problem going up the hill. Now coming right down through here, is really steep and really loose. And that's really like where you can die pulling heavy loads off road is when the trailer starts to push the vehicle. And it felt like the trailer was pushing the vehicle significantly right there. We didn't die, we made it. But I'm just saying it was definitely to the higher end of its capability as far as going down hills go through loose gravelly slopes. Anyways, let's get this load on the ground and we will compare the size difference from the four wheeler load to the tractor load. All right, so we have uh, both loads of wood stacked, and I don't think you guys are gonna be too shocked about the contrast between <laughs> the two loads. Anyways, let's take a look. 
So this here is the four-wheeler load right here. This pile or this stack uh, is six foot six in length and is approximately this high. This load back here is the tractor load and it measures seven foot six in length and is approximately that high. Anyways, both machines handled really, really good and in their element. So the tractor was not going to be able to access any of the area where the, where the four-wheeler got its wood from and the four-wheeler was not even going to come close to being able to move that load of wood, the, the tractor load of wood. It wouldn't even be able to get it moving on flat ground. And if you were unlucky enough to accidentally get it rolling, if you ever <laughs> went to go down any sort of grade, you would absolutely die trying to control that, that heavy of, of a load with the four-wheeler. The four-wheeler absolutely just doesn't have the weight or the traction. There's just no way it could do it. Anyways, I don't think there's a winner and loser in, in that sort of comparison there. Both of them excelled and did great. So uh, yeah, let's move on to something else. So for this next challenge, I'm going to represent the old 48 Ford. And I am going to represent the four-wheeler. The challenge itself is going to be, we have about three red oak logs that are about this big around and roughly 10 foot in length, and they're green, so they are considerably heavy. Anyways, we're going to see what machine can reliably move them around easier. And uh, I got a sneaking suspicion I'm going to come out on top on this one. We'll see about that. <laughs> what she doesn't know is I got a secret weapon. So who wants to go first? Well, I thought I did, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess I will. All right, let's get into it. I knew I shouldn't have let you pick first. Okay, so that went just about exactly how I thought it was going to go. Because you cheated. Yeah, I don't know. It's not my fault that she didn't come prepared. See, my oh. grandfather taught me to never bring a mustache to a beard fight. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I came prepared with the right equipment. Now, sure enough, the four-wheeler, it doesn't have a boom pole. It's just dead trying to drag the, the logs, which it's never going to be able to do that. But, but the reason why... <laughs> I brought the boom pole into the situation is because this is an element of decision making, a boom pole. Now, to empower a four-wheeler to the level of what this tractor is capable of right now, you're going to need a lumber arch. And a lumber arch is really, really expensive and it's really only good for dragging logs. And so, you know, a boom pole, you can buy this thing for $50 to $100 on Craigslist all day long. And you can stack big rocks with it. You can move logs. You can stack the logs, as you see. You could drag them. It's just, I mean, you can lift up the four-wheeler to do work. It just, it opens up a whole new level. And so maybe I cheated in this uh, challenge, but I also won. <laughs> <laughs> in this challenge... Oh, but are you thirsty? Because I brought up water on the four-wheeler. Hmm, well, that's a good point. I really don't have anything over here. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, let's move on to the next challenge and see, and see, uh, see how things turn out. 
All right, so for this challenge, again, I'm gonna be representing the 48 Ford. And I, the four wheeler. So this challenge is gonna be running errands. So what we've done is we have placed three bags of coal at a desired location. And it's simple. The first person to go get the bags of coal and return is the winner. That's most likely going to be me. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go. Hey, look at that coyote. What? Aww. All right, so that last challenge. I won that last challenge. <laughs> I mean, I guess Just I deserve. Just to clarify, <laughs> I won that last challenge. So, I mean, I guess I deserve that. I, I didn't do too good in that last one. Mm -hmm. But I got a feeling I'm about to make a strong comeback. <laughs> because for the next challenge, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna test or, or put the two of them together to see who has a tighter turning radius. Ooh. Mm, interesting turning radius now the four-wheeler has a way shorter wheelbase it's way smaller in general but I still think the tractor is going to outdo it so we have selected a turn right up here that's pretty hard to navigate and uh, who wants you want to go first I'll go first the champion will go first. <laughs> I guess that's how it works champion goes first so uh, all right let's go ahead and do it and see what happens All right, so I think that was pretty obvious, that last challenge. The, uh, the tractor clearly came out on top on that one. Now, it has a split brake, so that, that gives it a way sharper turning radius. That's a major advantage. But it's also something to consider if, you're, if you have a small lot or you're working in a small area. The four-wheeler doesn't have a tight turning radius. As you turn, it just kind of keeps going straight. And it's not very maneuverable when it comes to that. Anyways, I think we're pretty much all bored to death with, with these kind of challenges and we want to see the real thing. So enough of that. Let's get straight down to a toe-to-toe -to -toe tug of war. Nothing but two machines and a piece of chain. And there's only going to be one winner. Of course, that means me. there's going to be one loser. And it ain't going to be me. <laughs> so go ahead and place your bets. And if you want to be a winner, you might should place your bets on this guy over here. <laughs> I'm going to be on the old 48 Ford again. Anyways. I'm going to be on the 4 <laughs> Enough talking. Let's go ahead and hook up and start pulling. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, the four-wheeler made out absolutely terrible on that one. The tractor, it, you couldn't even tell you were pulling anything. It was like there was nothing at all hooked up behind it. So, now, the four-wheeler is at a huge disadvantage. I think it weighs a little over 600 pounds or something. And the tractor is much heavier. What, 2,300 pounds or something yeah, like that? Yeah, 2,300 exactly. pounds. And so, now, when, when we were thinking about a vehicle or a, a piece of, a, of equipment to work the land, one of the things that we were going to need to do was to be able to tow logs and tow trailers and move heavy things around. And as you can see, in the department of being a towing vehicle, the four-wheeler is absolutely a bad choice. It's not going to pull anything. Our firewood trailer, when we move that firewood trailer around with this four-wheeler completely empty, it feels like you're going to die if you go down any sort of grade at all. It starts to push the, the four-wheeler and it makes it feel like it's going to fishtail out. And it starts to fishtail out in the turns, but you can accelerate and get out of it if you're lucky. Anyways, as far as like a, a machine that's going to pull logs, pull trailer full of firewood, a four-wheeler is awful. It's, it's just not going to do it, not even close. Any small tractor is going to outdo the four-wheeler. However, uh, 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 as far as running errands, any tractor is going to be outperformed by the worst four-wheeler in the world is going to outperform <laughs> the best tractor. <laughs> and so there is, there is, there is, a, uh, there is a phenomenon on, on a homestead where you do about 150 small jobs to three or four big jobs. And so what we have noticed is since we had our four-wheeler, we don't use the tractor as much because we do so many small jobs to every one big job. And we don't have to do the small jobs with too big of a piece of equipment. So clearly the answer is if you have to choose between one or the other is to choose both of them. You need both pieces of equipment. That's clearly the answer here. However, if you're financially challenged like we were, that was not an option. And so I think anyone watching this video can kind of see that the better piece of equipment to start with is definitely the tractor. And uh, there is a lot to consider when buying a tractor. There's a lot to consider when buying a four-wheeler. And there's no way we would be able to get all of that information to you in such a short video but we did the best we could for such a short time period. Anybody has any questions about anything, feel free to ask. Again, on our channel here, we like to share information from our experience. And so from viewing our videos, you can see that there is some information to be shared there. However, a lot of the sharing of information comes through the comments from old timers who have experienced work in the land their whole life. And, and so that is another really good place to share information. And, and, and we want to take a moment here to say thanks to everybody for taking the time to write such detailed comments. Because not only do we appreciate the information, but we also appreciate sharing the information and having a place for everyone else to read the comments and everyone else to learn. Anyways, so yeah, we just wanted to say thanks to everyone for their, uh, their uh, properly thought out and, and uh, delivered comments. We appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, I guess that's enough for now. So we hope you guys enjoyed watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.